Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Red Elevator. Ascensor Rouge, el ascensor rojo, el ascensor rojo, for those in España. Please. I'm losing my mind, people. We are going to have such a fun episode today because I'm doing a really big renovation in my office. So today we're going to do the styling of the bookshelf that's in the office, a very small portion of it, because I wanna show you guys how to style your shelves. Follow me. And since so many of you ask, today I am wearing a black silk wrap dress from Natalie Martin. My shoes are Fendi. And of course, I'm stepping on my new Ruggable Collection rug. This is the Sen rug inspired by my Parisian trips. All items will be linked in the description box below. So the very first thing that I do, as I mentioned, was I assess the size. We buy a lot of decorative items in advance of styling. In this case, I had a bunch of these items already that I had been sort of stockpiling, knowing that I was going to be transforming that space. Some of them are old items that I've collected. Some of them are new. I like to mix it all depending on what I have at hand. And at the same time, I wanted it to match the decor that is going to be in that office perfectly. So the very first thing that I do when it comes to styling is that I like to place my bigger objects in. That helps me anchor the space and understand, okay, how many big objects do I have and how can I balance them? Every item that is on this shelf, we are going to link below, unless of course it's a vintage or one of a kind, which there are a couple but the rest of them can be purchased. If available, we will have them linked in the description section. So the very first item I put in was this New York book that I had just purchased actually from Anthropology, because as you guys remember, I was an Anthropology ambassador for many months and had collected a lot of their wonderful items. So I placed the New York book because it was a, um, an important piece for me. It reminds me of the trips I take to New York. I love New York. I've spent a lot of time in New York. I have clients in New York. So that has a bit of a sentimental attachment. So I put that in first. And then I looked at the top of the shelf. Really, I usually start from the top. The very, very top of the shelf, you wanna put your largest items on there because they are going to shrink as you look up. You want them to make a statement. I then place my anthropology to ceramic pottery items that I have their vases and I place them on the very top of the bookshelf to the left of the bookshelf as I know that that will balance the book that I have. Once I have my two sort of large objects that are going to counterbalance each other, I start with the books that I had uh, purposely saved for this particular shelf. So believe it or not, I have so many books and because I have so many shelves, I've got a huge collection, but because they're not all together, you know, it might look like I don't have as many books as I do, but they are plentiful of them. And what I like to do is scatter them so that when people in, are in different rooms, they can actually open one without ruining the decor, of course, placing it right back where they found it. But I do love it when people actually interact with the books. So I placed a stack of books at the very bottom shelf and I started to make sure that they were all the same size. I like the books to be the same size, and if they're not the same size, I work from outer, the bottom one being bigger, and going up vertically to smaller. So bottom bigger, top smaller. Then I placed my Anissa Kermish bookends, which I had been um, saving for this particular project, so I was happy to use them and excited to have them on display and then i made sure and added more books to my stack now something that i do which some people may frown upon is that i remove the covers of my books now if it's a signed or a first edition i keep the covers but really i don't like to keep the book covers because i find them to look very commercial and i rather have the actual book and it's less colorful and less busy so I literally remove my covers, I throw them out, unless of course it's an important book, and then I stack them. Then I add the rest of my books that I wanted on display, so I placed a couple of them to the right of my anthropology sort of urns, and then I added more books to, um, to the left of my New York book, 
because I felt that it needed something more. And so I have this beautiful modern art book that I placed um, next to it. And then I have these crate and barrel sort of candlesticks, which of course I'm not gonna put candles in, but I just love them because they're sculptural and place those to the left of the books. So if you have a lot of books on one hand to the left of the books, you wanna put something more sculptural and vice versa. Then I found this cute mirror. I have no idea why it's there. I think it's there for pre-zoom checks. And so I'm like, well, I think I'll put this mirror on the bookshelf and I decided that it wasn't gonna work. Why would there be a mirror on a bookshelf? It just didn't make sense. So I removed it. I then placed something that was leather on top of the books to change the texture of that specific section. So I had these beautiful leather um, containers that I got also from Anthropology. I placed one and then I added the bird in front of my Paris book. The Paris book I liked illustrating that flat vertically so that you could see the cover because I like the cover of this Paris bound book. And because of course it reminds me of my trips. Everything is a, is a reminder of things that I've done and, and things that I love. And that's what you should do as well. If a particular book has extra meaning for you, then I would illustrate that book, not just from its bound perspective, but from its cover perspective. I wanted to put height on top of my uh, books that are sort of centered in the middle. And so I put this wooden sculpture piece from Crate and Barrel on top of those books, again, wood is different in texture from the book. So I like mixing the materials and I like making things a little bit different. So I placed that on the three books that are sitting on that shelf. So after I thought I had most of my items in, I like to take a deep pause. And so I looked from a distance, I thought about it and I didn't like it. There was something that wasn't right and I didn't know what it was. I couldn't put my finger on it and this happens every time or most of the times and this is normal so what you do is you try and play with things and there's no first version is perfect it takes a lot of time and experience and an eye to be able to do this so don't think that this is easy and when you're doing it it's okay to make changes and so i started putting in different things i had this beautiful deep teak aroma you know glass scent thing i put that i didn't like it i didn't think it looked good enough in looking at this bookshelf i knew there was something i didn't like i didn't know what it was but i figured it out pretty quickly i didn't like the fact that there was yellow there was orange there was green it just looked like a rainbow to me and it just did not sit well on top of it i had put two design books really great design books actually mini ones in between my nissa bookends but i didn't like the colors there either it just didn't work for me i then added these marble bookends to the ends of the new york stack that i had on the right i like the fact that they would hold things together and they gave it a little bit more interest and depth then i started moving things a little bit to make sure that they are placed correctly. I moved the anthropology urns a little bit so that they would overlap perfectly, not over overlapping, not under overlapping. Believe it or not, there is such a thing. Then I had this really cute wooden bird that I got from Crate and Barrel. I wanted to have something wooden in this space because I love the feeling and the texture of the exterior and I always like to bring that in. And so I had this cute little wood bird. I placed that in front of the Paris book because I kept thinking maybe this bird was somehow flying into a Paris jardin. So I placed the bird in front of the book and I liked the balance of that tall book, you know, wooden sculpture. And then I stepped back again. I have this beautiful bowl that was made by an artisan when I was on a trip to Santa Fe, New Mexico. I'm gonna place that on the right of this stack of books and i love how it has a little bit of the black and white which is picked up from the wooden sculpture which is to the left of it and from the writing of the new york book i thought that that really came together and then i had my epiphany i felt that i was missing something super artistic and something with a little bit of uh, movement and volume and interest and so i grabbed my trusted uh, cb2 marble links i love them I put them in practically every project. I'm obsessed with them at the moment. And so I placed it on top of this wooden block, wooden sculpture that's U-shaped, and I had it drape naturally. Now it took a while to get the right movement, to make sure that it's balanced, to make sure it doesn't fall off. I mean, there's a whole thing. And I loved the way that it came out. And I was now super happy with my bookshelf. I was happy with the amount of items that were on there. You don't wanna over accessorize and you don't wanna under accessorize. So 
you just have to know when to stop because you can get a little crazy and keep adding and I suggest that you don't do that and really, really try and restrain yourself from over accessorizing. I placed this leather bucket tote type of item on the bottom. This is where I can throw um, items in there either Oscar's toys, I know that he comes into my office, Oscar's my puppy, not my child. And um, it's actually a nice thing to have because it has height and actually quite useful because you can throw things in there in the interim. I could put samples in there, fabric samples, toys, whatever. And lastly, and most importantly, I had an, a total aha moment when I saw in the corner of my eye, in the corner of the room, my gilded, um, art that I had purchased from an estate sale. Believe it or not, this belonged to Jackie Collins. And I got it years and years ago when I went to her estate sale after she had passed and she had this in her home and I loved it. I don't even know what it is. It looks like an old um, instrument of some sort, musical instrument. So I placed that instead of the Paris book and the entire bookcase came together at that very moment. I love having, like I mentioned to you guys before, the mix of the very old and the very new, the modern New York book with the old aged gilded painting from Jackie Collins. And it just really came together. Love, I mean, it just really came together. So I hope you guys enjoyed um, watching this process. If you do like it when I take in a deep dive, when I go into a deep dive with regard to how I style things or how I do things, let me know below so that I can actually provide more of this type of content for you. Thank you so much for joining me on this very fun episode of The Red Elevator. We had so much fun renovating my office that I cannot wait to share with you this big collaboration that we did with a brand that is so chic that you guys definitely have heard of and know of. And I will be revealing that soon. So make sure and hit the bell if you guys wanna get notified when these episodes come out. You do not wanna miss these. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. We are going to do a complete transformation of my office. New rugs, new curtains, built-ins. It's gonna be so fun, I can't wait to reveal. We're just waiting for the last items to trickle in before we can do the full reveal. See you next Sunday on this channel. Thank you for being you and stay safe.